Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to show you how you can create a simple sales database, and this is part two of a series. So previously we created two tables, customer, products, if I just open customer, you can see it's just a list of customers and a list of products, just two products at the moment. And we did some formulas there to work out whether VAT was due on this product or not. And then we did one query, which was listing the customers and the products that they were sold. So it's very simplistic, this bit. I want to change a few things, and then I'm going to create a new table called Sales, which will allow me to create invoices based on this database. But this, this table I now need to change to be a stock table, a stock value table, as opposed to working out um, the VAT and just that's it. So if I go into Design on this, Let's change this, um, I'll just call this unit price. So unit price, still a calculated field. Let's have a quick look at that. So that's worked it out. And then I want to work out the stock value. So based at, we've got 21 at that price, 240. The VAT is there so if it's got a tick it's going to do the VAT so I've took the tick off that one but I put the tick back on so I just want another column which is going to be stock value so if I go back into design stock value will also be a calculated field stock value calculated field so stock value is going to be unit price, the one I've just changed, time stock quantity, that's it, okay. Have a quick look at that. So, 5,040, and that needs to be formatted to currency. Um, let's just push this up there. Have a look, save, have a look. So if I say there's just one of these, 240 is correct, so I'll put it back to 21. So that's all working, so that's that's good. Close that one down, and now I want to create a new table, which is going to be a sales table, and doing it in design straight off. So the first thing I want is sales ID, that can be the primary key, and it can also be an auto number. And then I need to link it to these two tables, so I need customer ID, and I need to do a lookup wizard for this one. So a lookup, lookup, customer ID, customers. I want customer ID and the name, but it'll hide the ID field. I'm not bothered about sorting it. So it's hiding the ID field, that's good. And it can just be called customer ID, because you can change that if you have to. Now it says there, enable data integrity. So last week we looked at doing relationships where I ticked that so I'm just going to tick this one as well so it does it automatically for me finish save this is going to be TBL sales okay no primary key this is the primary key sales ID and then the next one is going to be product ID it's also going to be a lookup for the products table. Next, products, next, product ID, product name, next. And again, same thing, this is the products, next. And tick that, finish, yes, yes. Uh, let's have a quick look at that. So Okay, nothing there at the moment, but that's okay. So go back into design. I want a couple more fields. I want quantity fields. That's just going to be number. And I want a date field, so I can do a date. Date, date time. That needs to be date now. Should put invoice date actually for that one. Invoice date. 
and I also need the invoice number. It can be a number field because I'm just going to use numbers. So save that, have a look. Okay, so sales ID, customer ID. So the way this would work then, if I select a customer and a product, Excel, and he gets two of them, and he got them today, invoice number one. Now what I need is some calculations here so that I can work out what um, the actual amount would be. So that's not going to happen in the table. So that's just invoice number one. And if I go back into design, maybe I want to put that near the top. Invoice date. Let's have a quick look. Yeah. So we've got invoice number, customer, product, and quantity. That's what we're buying. All right, so in a query, I'm now going to work out how much that's going to be costing. So close that down. Now to create a query, go to query, create query design, and I need the sales table, so get that in there. I need the products, and I need customer. Right, I don't need that link there, get rid of that. So what I need is the invoice number, because I can then use a query and in a parameter query later on to filter that out customer ID product ID quantity and date so maybe I'll move that date that way a bit so we've got the date there now what I need is to work out if I could have a quick look at this if I run this let's pull that information in too so I now need to work out what that is in terms of price so you've got the customer details there and you've got the products here. So I want to do a calculated field that is going to look at the unit price and times it by the quantity in here. So let's, and then I also have to come up with a VAT as well. So VAT due also needs to be, I'll do the VAT one first actually. So to, to see what I'm doing, rather than trying to type in this little box, if you do shift and F2, You'll get a zoom up so you can see so the title is going to be um, VAT first of all so VAT old colon you need a colon so then it's just basically going to be in square brackets VAT due so that's that field there VAT due close the square bracket times square bracket again QTY which is there. Now, if you go through the, um, if you've got the names that are similar in different tables, you could have to go through the, the builder option and make sure you select the right one, but this should be okay. There's no, no clash going on there. Let's see what happens here. And then that needs to be formatted to currency. So I've got the property sheet up there. Look, property sheet and currency. And let's have a quick look. So two power, so Let's just put that to 1, that should go to 40, that's good. And then 2 is 80, that's good. So go back into design. So now what I need to know, that's the VAT due based on that figure. Now I need to know what the total is. So I'm going to look at quantity times unit price. Again, I'll zoom up. Shift F2. So this is going to be, so that's that old total old colon so this is going to be that old I'll call this net because this is going to be without VAT so I, can, so I can have them separated off net total old is going to be QTY times price and again, if you've got duplicate names in these tables, you'll have to use the builder. But let's see what that looks like. Run that one. So two of them, so they're 200. Let's have a quick look at what they are. 
products, yeah, 200. So you've got, if you wanted to put the price in there, let's do that actually, let's put the price in there so we can see the price. So in the products, you've got price, the price field, so quantity two. So if I just put the price field in there, that might look a little bit better. Let's move it across to there. Do it the other way around, it's probably easier. Have a look, so we've got price, that owed 80. Net total is 400. Total owed will be 400 plus that, so we now can do another sum. Click in the next blank column. Shift F2 to zoom it up. So total to pay, I'll call it, to pay is going to be in square brackets, VAT old plus net total old plus in square brackets net total old close square brackets so that old that's it net total old that's it have a look see if it works 480 that's added that up Back in the design, that needs to be formatted to currency, like so. Have another look. So now we can save this as QRY sales. QRY sales, that works okay. And then we can add another, let's say it buys two things. Invoice number one still, and it's the same day, the 16th, same person. Excel, no, not Excel. Let's go for access. And he buys one of them, and that's that, like so. Now I'm going to do another invoice. Invoice two. For a different date, so Ann Jones. So you can buy Excel. Now, if I want the company in there, I haven't got the company in there, I've got the customer name. If we're going to get, let's get the company. Company name, company, it's got customer. Let's go there, company, let's have a look at that. So when you've, because the way this is set up, if I just save this for a minute, if I do a number two for that and do the 11th again for Ann Jones, when I select Ann Jones, it should put her company in automatically, and it does. And she can get access as well. She just had one of them. Oh, 10. I'll put 10. So now I've got some information. Now I can create a report based on this. If I close this query down, so that's some sales. Now click on that and create a report. I'll just use the wizard to start off with. So it's bring everything across. I want to separate this by custom ID. And because you've got figures, numbers, you can do summary options. Uh, I don't want the quantity price. Total to pay. That's all I really want. Do I want the net value? Yeah, go on, let's go for that. And that. So those are the normal things you would see. And then the percentage of that. Okay. Next. Landscape. Now this is always, in my view, always going to get truncated. So you'll have to mess about with this to fix this. But... Let's just put RPT query sales, finish, and it generates it. And like I said, the date and everything's squashed up, so it's not great. Basically, you've got to go into um, design and mess, mess about with these to get them to fit. Um, I can't remember which ones were truncated invoice date and total load. This one. And I think all of this, it's, it makes more sense to do this yourself. So I probably will. I'll, fix, I'll sort of fix that one. The date is still not fixed and it's still banging in. The labels aren't fixed. Invoice date is probably this one. He's pulling across. Let's have a look. Get in there. It's banging into that. So there's a lot of work needs to be done on this, but you get the idea. This is the sales report. So now I can either do a parameter query on this for customer ID 
or invoice number. So that's what I want to do. So if I just close it down, I do want to save that. And go into this and just go into design on this one. And then do a parameter query for on the invoice number. So in there, square bracket, and then you do a little prompt. Enter invoice number or whatever you want to call it. So when you run this, it will ask you for that. Now, if I just run it in the query level and type 1, it just gives you invoice number 1. If I go back into design and run it again and type 2, it will give you invoice number 2, which is Anne Jones. So that's it. Yep. Now, because that report is based on that, it will ask you for the invoice number. So if I type 1, OK. I'm just getting that person's invoice, invoice number 1. And there's all the details, and I need to fix this like I've already said. So what I'll do on the next session is I'll create a report, this same report, but I'll do it manually rather than using the wizard and trying to come into here and get rid of all this sort of stuff. So that's what I'll do in the next one. But that's all I want to cover so far. We've created a sales table, and we've linked it together, and we've now got a query that's going to show us our sales. We've put a parameter on it, so it's just listing it per invoice. If you wanted another query without the parameter, you just take the, copy that and just go into design and get rid of the parameter, parameter bit. And then we've created a report based on that. But that's all I want to cover on this little bit. So hopefully you found that useful and I'll catch you in the next session.